Hey guys, this is the first, uh, I mean, this is a, a series that I'm thinking to produce. It's supposed to be old book. Old book, I love old book because I love it to when I go for a walk. I love when I go for a walk. And uh, as I'm walking, I can like uh, listen to some old books. So I'm able to read like several books uh, at once. So, um, I mean, that makes me very happy, like I can learn fast. And uh, I don't know if that's gonna work, I'm going to release like uh, episodes, like w one at a time and can like give me feedback. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, let, uh, to make a disclaimer. Uh, this, uh, this audio book is based on a copyright book. Uh, I'm not using this book for like commercial. It's a uh, creative use, I guess some country you can do that in Brazil, at least I, as far as I know, when you do an audio book, that's not like a, uh, not a problem. So if you are the copyright holder of, the, of this book, just let me know that the, I'll be glad to do whatever you want me to do. But uh, keep in mind that I'm not selling the book. I'm just doing that for educational reason. So guys, uh, I'd like to let make, make uh, I guess, I give you some thought why I have chose specifically this book to start this series. Uh, could, I have several books I would like to read for you, I mean, if that series works. Uh, but uh, I'd like to start specifically with this book called The Music of Life, uh, Beyond the Biology, Beyond the Genome, and it, it was written by Dennis Noble. I have chosen this book because uh, that was one of the first books I read about system biology that he was quite easy to read. I mean, the book is quite straightforward, there is no equation, and the, I think that's an amazing starting point if you are like trying to understand system biology. Even if you are kind of advanced, I believe that you should always keep in mind about the history, the philosophy. Uh, I have seen several people practice system biology, but uh, when they practice system biology, they, I guess they, um, I guess they do not like, um, just pay too much attention to the model, to the simulation. I think the system biology, as you're going to see maybe in the future in this channel with Alexei Klontkin in, in a kind of a conversation, uh, system biology has a more, is a kind of philosophy. It's not just about the, uh, about the numeric simulation equation. Equation are just the, 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 the mean by which we make system biology happen. But uh, I guess in the, even in the future we find another way to make a system biological system with mathematical model. The system biology will still be there. Uh, as one example for kind of a reflection uh, point, I'm studying a technique uh, from computer science called the test-driven design. Essentially, it's a new way of, of programming, not necessarily a new way, but it's a kind of way, uh, a different paradigm to program a computer in which you focus on the test, not on the code. You make the test, then you make the code, you make the test, and you make the code. That's a different way of programming. System biology is more or less the same. It's, a, it, a, it's like a different way of, of seeing what are there. Uh, so far, we have been too much attention to the... Maybe I can read another book for you in the future. A book from Capra called The, uh, uh, the Web of Life. Maybe I can read to you The Turning Point. Maybe I can read to you one of his books that talk about reductionism. But uh, system biology is a kind of holistic perspective. So this book gives you a, a, a huge, a considerable amount of uh, thoughts, history, reflection. There is a new book, a new one, a new one uh, from Dennis Noble, but I start to start from this one because I read this book, I know how nice, how cool is this book. I'm not sure if you already have a, all the book of this book, but I have seen something on YouTube, I have seen some kind of a computer generated audio book, I have seen some people reading the book. I'm, for example, right now I'm just uh, listening to a book when I go for my walk. And the, this book motivated me because I, 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 was, I always thought that if I to read an audio book, you need to be a professional. I have to confess, I'm not very good at reading, but I'm going to experiment with this, audio, if it, if this book, so look at me know. If you like or not, because maybe my voice is not like nice. I mean, when when you are listening to your audiobook, I'm, the person is, should have a, a nice a nice voice. I also I'm not American. I'm not I'm not an English speaker, a native English speaker. So my accent maybe could bother you. Maybe you cannot understand what I'm saying. Anyway, you have the book. You can go there. Uh, I guess I'm going to not 
Sometimes I'm going to make a mess because I'm going to stop and not good at reading neither in Portuguese, which is my native language. So please, uh, sometimes ask to give me a break and uh, let me know if you like or not. If you don't like, I can stop. I mean, I, I want to say that's nice for you and for me. So if, uh, with that said, I would like to start with the book. Uh, so, The Music of Life by Dennis Noble, read by Jorge Guerra Pires at the, can, at the channel uh, Theoretical and Mathematical Biology. The Music of Life Beyond Biology Beyond the Genome by Dennis Noble. Oxford University Press. Oxford University Press, the Department of University of Oxford. Copyright by Dennis Noble, 2006. Pu first published at 2006. Content of the book. The CD of life, the genome. I'm going to read for you just the, the big, uh, let's say the, the header, but anyway. So the first header is the CD of life, the genome, the organ of uh, 30,000 pipes. The score, is it read down? The conductor, downward causation. The rhythm section, the heartbeat and the other rhythms. The orchestra, organ and system of the body. Modes and keys, cellular harmony, the compressor, evolution, the opera treater, the brain, curtain call, the artist disappear. Introduction What is life? The question can be interpreted in many ways. When nature approach it is scientifically. Even from this standpoint, there can be a variety of answers since contemporary scientists can understand the question rather differently. Moreover, each generation needs to re revisit the question almost anew. The advancing biological science are there rapid. It's only 50 years ago that we first discovered that the genome material was the molecule called DNA, dixoribonucleic acid, and that, that came in long uh, molecular strand of four similar chemicals called base. Now, we know the, geno the human genome, the entire DNA of a human is a sequence of uh, 3 billion pairs of pairs, and you have identified each of them. We also know how the organization of these bases serves to enable protein production. From each protein, the genetic material provides something like a template. The structural sequence of the protein is encoded in the DNA. We know in some detail how this code works. For that matter, we also know the sequence and structure of many of the protein that DNA encodes. Biological science has never advanced so rapidly. How has that changed the way we see life? It has answered many questions and throughout many more. The answer that you arrive with reflect the process of investigation that you follow. Over the last half a century, we have produced by breaking living system down into their small, less components. The individual gene molecules. Happy Duppy has been smashed into billions of fragments. This is an impressive achievement. For example, we, now, we can now pinpoint a gene mutation whose effect may kick in during middle age to cause sudden cardiac death. We know nearly all the major steps in this causal chain. Though not yet why it kicks in, precisely when it does in a given individual. This kind of success is more 
and more common. Yet, such checks so far not appearing with the frequency that the optimist predicted when the Human Genome Project was announced. The benefits for health care are slow to arrive. Why is that? People begin to understand the reason. It has to do with how the small scale relates to the big, to the large. We know a lot about molecular mechanisms. Now, the challenge is to extend that knowledge up the scale. How do, you do, how do we use to understand the true light on the process that grows on the entire living system? That's not an easy question. Quite soon, as you move it from gene to the protein that they code for, and then on the entire between this protein, the problem becomes serious complicated. Yet, we need to understand this complex in order to interpret the molecular and genetic data. And on that base, to talk in a fresh and useful way about larger questions like what is life? This is, then, this is, this, it is the challenge that the sequencing the genome has raised. Can you put the uh, hop it up uh, back together again? That's where system biology comes in. This is a new and important dimension of biological science. Though it has strong historical root in classical biology and the psycholo psychology going back over centuries, in recent decades, however, biologists have tended to focus quite narrowly on the individual component of living system. What uh, property does each component have? How does it therefore interact over the short term with all the components of similar scale? Now, we are ready to ask some bigger questions. These are, these, these are about systems. At each level of the organism, its various components are embedded in an integrated network of systems. Each such system has its own logic. It is not possible to understand that logic merely by investigating the property of the system components. This book is about system biology. It's about uh, the preconditions for implications of system biology. It says at uh, this stage in our exploration of life, you need to be ready for a clap, for a basic re rethink. Molecular biology requires a certain way of thinking. It's about the naming and behavior of the parts. We reduce each whole to its component part and define them exhaustively. Biologists are now perfectly used, used to that thinking and the interest in lay public has caught up to. So we are now ready to move on. System biology is where you are, you are moving to. Only it requires quite different mindset. It's about uh, putting together rather than taking apart. Integration rather than reduction. It starts with what you have learned from the reductionist approach. And then it goes further. It requires that we develop ways of thinking about the integration that are as rigorous as our reductionist procedures, but different. This is a major challenge. It has implication beyond the purely scientific. It means change our philosophy in the full sense of the term. How to provoke such a change? I have chosen to write a polemic. I have chosen to write a polemic. This book is a radical analysis of many of the current accepted dogmas in biology. It turns some of them upside down. It offers an unmatched defense of the need for a system level approach. That is not because I am un unpressed with what reductionist molecular biologists have achieved. On the contrary, it's because I want to see biological science garner the fruit that uh, the great reductionist drive has put within our grasp. As I explained in chapter 5, I start my research career in physiology as a card carrying reductionist. I know how successful reductionism science is done and have done much of it myself in my own field. I still use it to its quantitatively in my current research on simulating 
the organs of the body. And that's how, during the last decade and so, I have come to see the need to redress the, the balance. If we all keep our nose down to the lower level greenstone, no one will see the big picture or realize what is needed if you are to fill it in. Successful integration at the system level must be built on successful reductionism, but reductionism alone is far from sufficient. Like any polymicist, I make free use of met metaphor. I will also tell some story. These are intended to be enjoyable and, and also to join the reader away from the many current dogma. In 1944, Schrender wrote a remarkable book. In it, he correct predict. Uh, let me just open a parenthesis. For those of you, uh, whenever I, I want to stop reading the book and make for you a comment, I just will say something like, he, I am just open a parenthesis. Edwin Schrender was a big thinker at the quantum mechanics. He's quite well known because of his famous cat. He created the Schrender cat which is a kind of a paradigm, a kind of thought, ex a thought experiment that he, a cat is inside the box. So you never know if the cat is alive or the cat is dead, uh, unless you open the box. That has with quantum mechanics, how the electron behave. So as you can see, Schrender, uh, they started to go that he wrote this book at the end of his life. So let's go on. Now we start to read the book again. In it, he correctly predicted that the genetic code is an aperiodic crystal, that is, a chemical sequence without regular repetition. Like many scientists at the time, he thought that the code would be found in the protein rather than in the DNA. So what he spoke of was not where he expected, but it was there nonetheless. Many of it of his insights match re remarkably well with what we have since learned. In just under uh, 100 pages, he shifted the basic paradigm of biology. This book is of similar length. I first thought to give it the same title, What is Life? But I have not been so audacious. Instead, I have chosen a title that reflects the main metaphor of the book, the scissors level view of life can be compared to music. If so, what is the score and the, who was the composer? A central question, therefore, that uh, recur throughout the book is where, if anywhere, is the program of life? The French Nobel Prize winner Jacques Morand and François Jacob refer to the genetic program the idea that the instructions for the de development of each life, each uh, living organism, lie in its genome, in, or in its gene. The same idea is conveyed by the popular description of the genome as the book of life, a kind of blu blueprint. The central role of genes as casual agent was also greatly enforced by popular perception of Richard Dawkins' highly influential book, The Selfish Gene. The theme of my book is that there is no such program and that there is no privileged level of causality in biological systems. Chapter 1 lays the groundwork for the rest of the book. It does this first by requesting, uh, re re recasting the genome as a database for the transmission of a successful organism, rather than a program that creates them. The second step is to replace the metaphor of the selfish gene by gene as prisoners. These two radical uh, switch, switches of perceptions are essential to understand the rest of the book. Why it is necessary to deal with the popular misperception of uh, genetic programs the Book of Life and Selfish Gene are high them to understand that the scientists responsible for the t these fruitful ideas may well not have approved of the way they have been widely interpreted. Rich Darwin, for example, has also written some of the best critiques of the program idea. 
and is himself far from being a gene determinist. The book is organized into 10 chapters. Each uses a different musical metaphor for some aspect of the biology of life. We start with uh, the genome in chapter 1 and end with the brain in chapter 9. Chapter 10 stands on its own kind as a coda. Acknowledgement. Sorry, I'm not going to read acknowledgements. I mean, it's quite boring, a lot of names. So guys, since I, I'm, I'm still starting to do, to, to do that, I have to, I will do it like it's a baby step. So I stop here and come back with you in the next audio with chapter one.